Strong Dads wants to thank Quality Auto Mart for joining us as a sponsor. Quality Auto Mart was born in 1985. They are owned and operated by Mark and Nancy Repke. Quality Auto Mart provides all the services, repairs, and maintenance for your vehicle's needs with a three-year auto parts and labor warranty. They offer complimentary vehicle safety inspection and estimates. Also, they offer a shuttle service and the fourth oil change is always on them. They are located at 7307 on State Road 46 in Batesville, Indiana. Make sure you give them a call at 812-934-2301. Welcome to Strong Dads. How you doing, Kyle? Um, I'm recovering. I'm in my recover phase. I got my coffee now. All is right in the world. We, uh, for those of you guys who don't know, last week <laughs> we uh, we did our, our workouts. Still recovering from it. So Ooh. yes, check check out the uh, the first part of this two part series, all things kettle bar. So we're gonna kind of dive into the idea yeah. of kettle bar, where it came from, and kind of pick your brain. So I think it'll be a good show. Yeah, yeah. Well, so like Kyle said, uh, check out last week's show because. Uh, part of the reason why we're doing this show is um, talking about living the dream, your dream. Okay. Yeah. And the idea of um, you get things in your mind, you know, whether it's to start a new business, whether it's to go on a trip, whether it's to get a, go to school, to get married, you have a dream, but there's a lot that goes into actually taking the dream into reality. Yeah. And a lot of guys get stuck in the dream phase. Yep. They just get stuck. And then all of a sudden years pass and they go, wow, I never did any of that. Um, but the risk is actually doing it. Yeah. And when you do it, sometimes going, why did I do this? Yeah. You know, whether that's marriage, a business, having yeah. kids, yeah. you know, or, you know, creating something like the kettle bar. Yep. Um, and so that's kind of where that came from. Um, so. We just get, you know, check out our last week's show. We actually did the workout. Kyle, beat, beat me up a little you bit. You did all right. You did I, all I right. did okay. I, I'm hoping, I'm hoping, guys, again, let me know. <laughs> I'm hoping I didn't look like a complete buffoon. Well, so, what I did so that you feel better, you know, being a strong dad, I set you at where I start the ladies. <laughs> and, <laughs> Well, no, because I didn't want you to get hurt. Oh, I mean, I, I'm, I wanted you to look good. All right. <laughs> I shouldn't say that. I've got some ladies that come in and throw that thing around like it's nothing. Really? Yeah. Because it. one thing that you made a comment about was you felt like you were losing your balance. A yeah, lot. a lot. And that's that's that whole unfamiliar uh, body awareness of how you have to adapt to something yeah. when it's throwing you off in space. And once you kind of get that, you can really do some really fun and just dynamic kind of motions. And that's when I say that, I mean, the ladies that have been using it, they are just familiar now. Sure. And oh they, yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I noticed when we were working out just the, uh, the versatility of mm -hmm. the kettle bar and the the capabilities to be able to do we were talking you know just kind of a, a, a full body workout yeah and, and really i mean you can you know it, it's not so like you know machine specific like you would get in a gym right. like there, there's just one machine can really work out so many parts of your body is really cool yeah well let's uh let's thank our sponsors yep. and then we'll get into a little bit of like maybe some of the processing of, of the kettle bar, but then we'll, let's move that into other dreams and things like that. Okay. So, uh, we want to thank quality auto Mart for being a sponsor of the strong dads show. So thank those guys, uh, and just got there and get your car worked on like right it. outside of Batesville, Indiana yep. on route 46. Good deal. Thanks so much for Casey outdoor solutions. Come alongside of us. Unbelievable facility up on state line road. Check them out. Let them know. We sent you up there, uh, home decor, outdoor needs. Hopefully fingers crossed the weather's the weather's going to be making a turn here as we're recording. We're heading into the March, uh, March season. So I'm sure they're gearing up for a busy season. So check them out. Let them know we sent you up there. Yeah. So you guys can see we're in my gym. So we're in a lot of echo. So we apologize, but not. It's yeah. what a gym is, That's okay? Right. And um, I, I think maybe to start with, you know, when we talk about a dream, um, sometimes you dream for the wrong reasons. In other words, you dream for a quick fix, mm, okay. you, a get rich quick scheme, yeah. or this will just make me make it better for me. Yeah. And, and I've come to realize like those are dangerous dreams. Yeah. Those are dreams. If I'm just doing it to appease my flesh, you know, 
um, I, that's probably one, it's not going to produce much fruit, but two, it's, it's really, um, I'm not going to have the heart to sustain it. Yeah. Okay. okay? Yeah. Well, I mean, let, let's get into that idea for you. So obviously, uh, you know, for, for those of you guys don't know, um, and I know you, we, we've mentioned it before on the show and I know you have Merle, but the, the kind of the progression, so the progression of your dream to turn into what it currently is. Um, can you talk a little bit about kind of, uh, the, the, the starting process of what, what kind of, you know, prompted this in your mind to where we're at today, kind of w- working yeah. through that whole dream process for you. Yeah. So the, I, I never woke up one day saying I want to create a piece of equipment or anything like that. Um, necessity is the mother of invention is mm-hmm. what comes to mind. And I, I share the story many times, but um, I've had multiple problems with neck and neck stability and had multiple neck surgeries. And finally, after my third surgery, uh, I came, I had a, uh, a problem and ended up with a condition called C5 palsy. Mm. And so I lost the use of my left arm and shoulder, the whole pec area. And uh, man, you know, when I, you know, like that's my hobby. Yours is golf, mine is just fitness, riding bikes, yep. triathlon and stuff like that. And I couldn't do any of that. My arm just sort of hung there. And so out of frustration, I had a basement full of fitness equipment, but I was like, I've got to do something. Mm -hmm. And that's where the finisher came from. And because the finisher allowed me, I couldn't lift weight. I had no hand strength at all, but the finisher allowed me to slide the weight. And so at least starting to get resistance in other areas and other planes of motion. Okay. And I started to see really some pretty solid improvement. Um, and over a course of five or six months, um, and this was even after physical therapy, okay, which physical therapy was good, but it, it still was very limited. And so the finisher allowed me to all of a sudden get the hand back over the head, okay. get hand strength back. And in the meantime, I noticed how much I sweat naturally. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a, a sweaty pig, <laughs> um, but I was sweating like crazy doing these patterns. Sure. Because then I added the other hand. Okay. And so it was kind of like the wax on, wax off, but I was doing it on a slick slide board type surface. And I developed a, a really set protocol so that every day I would go in and run these particular exercises mm-hmm. so that I could just improve the strength in the arm. Wow. Well, fast forward, you know, that's now in physical therapy clinics and stuff like that. But, you know, I got excited thinking, wow, everybody needs this. Yeah. Everybody needs this. This is so great. Look what it's doing because it's also a great workout. And then I started to produce those. Wah, 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 wah. <laughs> it was expensive. Yeah. It was um, very hard and expensive to ship mm. and to store. That platform is a four feet by six feet platform. So as long as like in our gym today, you know, you guys can't see it because it's on the other side of the camera, but I keep them set up all the time because they're, it's a chore to take them up and down. Yeah. Um, it also did not um, allow for any lifting because the table held the weight, gotcha. which that actually is the gift right there. Sure. Because then it allows you to learn how to move something in space without actually having the downward uh, compression. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So, so that was the benefit, but yet like I couldn't get any lifting. In, all right. And so my gear started spinning. I bet. How, how can I combine these? How can I do some lifting in a smaller footprint, but still also be able to move something in space and just brainstorming and playing with things. I literally just had, um, an old pipe down in my basement and I just strapped some, uh, some weights on the top of it just to see if it would give me a similar feel. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, Oh, well, that's kind of close. Yeah. And so that's kind of how we fast forward it into the kettle bar. Yeah. Well, wow. well, and, and I, I want to talk about that, Merle. So, so, you know, as we talk about this dream and, and you guys out there dreaming and trying to come up with what, again, like you were saying at the beginning of the show, whether that's marriage, whether that's kids, whether that's, you know, a business developing a product, 
Talk, talk us through kind of the progression. Um, what, what is the time frame? So from when you first did the finisher to current day, mm-hmm. you know, developing the kettle bar, because I think it's important to know that, you know, dreams take a lot of, a lot of work and a lot of brainstorming, a lot of effort, a lot of, you know, of people around you to, to help facilitate that dream. Can you kind of talk us through the, the time frame? Yeah. Well, I think that's a very important thing to do because um, you will hear people say, especially when you're starting a business, or something like that you've got to go all in you've got to go all in and that's true you do have to go all in but you have to you're taking whatever is part of you all in yeah and so the idea of going all in if it were just me by myself right right. that would have been i i really would have seen this whole process fast forward much faster but and this is not a slam on my wife or family or anything you know, I made a commitment to her at first. Yep. I made a commitment to her over the equipment, over my shoulder, over anything coming together. And we had kids. And yep. it was basically like, listen, uh, because she saw when the finisher was starting to really bubble, she saw what it was costing. Mm. <laughs> and and we took on some debt to do that, you yeah. know, because uh, she didn't want to totally squash my dream. Mm. Um, but then she started getting pretty nervous. And, you know, the, the truth was, is it wasn't selling and covering itself. Right. And so I had to slow it all down. Mm. And so that whole process started in 2012. Okay. And now, of course, as we record, it's 2023. Yeah. Um, in the process, um, we um, adopted kids. <laughs> we started Rock Solid Families, a new ministry. And all of these things were part of our family. And so, to be honest, like my dream of this product was definitely on the lower side of that tier sure. because of the whole family. So, when you talk about timing, you have to take into consideration who it includes. Yeah. And I think um, you'll hear guys that just go all in, but at what sacrifice? Yeah. Are you willing to sacrifice your marriage? Are you willing to sacrifice, you know, your, your kids to this? Mm. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm just asking the question. I, right, I don't right. know. I mean, that's going to have to be for you. It wasn't an option for me. Yeah. Well, I mean, I, I love what you're saying there, Merle, this, this idea. So, so if we take, you know, your example of with the kettle bar and this, this, you know, the venture that you're jumping into, you talk a little bit about, you know, Linda supporting you and being behind you. Um, talk a little bit about that process of, because it is such a, you know, obviously it, it's either, you know, just like you were saying, if it was just you by yourself, you know, that's one thing, but if you do have a family, you know, we're talking to you strong dads out there, talk a little bit about how that balance of, of your passion of wanting to bring a product to, to market, but also realizing, you know, family first, Linda is first, you know, my family, right. that, that has to come first. Talk a little bit about that to, to our strong dads out there. Well, so at Rock Solid Families, where we do our coaching of marriage, you'll know that this is a conscious decision of understanding hierarchy of relationships. Mm. And the hierarchy of relationships we believe, okay, is that God's first. So first and foremost, God gives us gifts. God takes care of us, he provides. And so my, um, my connection to him is my number one relationship. In other words, I do not want to offend God. I do not want to spit in God's face, yeah. okay? The second one, is between my wife and I, Mm. between Lynn and I. That is a conscious decision. And so making that decision, like, you know what? I'm protecting that no matter what. Right. Okay. And then family. Okay. Then it's family. And then after that, it comes me as an individual. Okay. And listen, it's not like, you know, I'm way down there. You know, you have to take care of yourself every day. Right. But it's, especially as a man, we are called to be sacrificial. Yeah. And most of us are like boys. Yeah. If we don't get what we want, we we mope and we whine and we complain that we're not getting things our way. And it's just like, just because you're not getting it today doesn't mean you're not going to get it. Mm. God wants us to ask, but he wants to do it in the proper order 
of, of relationships and timing. Yep. And so, and I've learned that the hard way, yeah. right? I mean, Haven't we all? Yeah, I mean, I don't want to act like I've got that all together. Yeah. Lynn and I had um, heavy discussions, possible arguments. <laughs> <laughs> um, we had a lot of back and forth on it. And she, to, cre to her credit, she recognized the dream and um, she could have just squashed it. She could have just said, that is ridiculous. We don't have, and, and that has happened before, okay? Um, but through our own work in our own marriage, she came to realize that that's something that helps my heart beat. Yeah. Just like, you know, um, helping others is something that makes her heart beat. Yeah. Is one better than the other? Well, ultimately, we all want to help in some way. Yeah. Right? No, I like it. Uh, you know, again, this shows all the thing kettle bar and, and, and a kudos to you for, for, you know, pursuing that dream. Um, when we talk about the actual kettle bar itself, can you walk us through kind of the process of, of what mm. that looks like? Cause obviously there was a long design process. You went through a whole getting a patent for this. Yep. And obviously now, you know, sitting behind us is kind of the, some of the evolutions. Yeah. Uh, there's of said multiple prototypes yeah. back there. Yeah. T talk about, you know, from the very first prototype to where we're at today, the, the patent, you know, get, yeah. getting all that kind of started. Uh, the very first prototype is not here. It was literally a metal pole with a weight. Uh, I bolted a weight. I just put a sleeve on it. Right. Uh, that's down in my basement somewhere. I don't you know. You have to hang that up. I have to hang it up. It, it, it is caveman completely. <laughs> this, the second actual prototype that I had a company, a local company, fabricate up for me. Um, it is bomb proof. It is yeah. so, it, it's like 40 pounds where the, these are under 10 pounds now. You got, I hope and, you guys can see that back there. They're pretty cool just sitting back there. I like it. Well, the one is under 10 pounds. The other ones are probably 17, 18, 19 pounds okay. um, because one's made of aluminum. The other are made of steel. Um, yeah. So multi, look at the handle types that have changed over the time. Yeah. That's only through trial and error. Yeah. Okay. Um, whether it's made of steel, whether it's made of aluminum, um, how the ball and socket worked, mm. um, how it is standing up right now and how we did that. So I had, um, and again, everything, sometimes you feel terrible because you, you're asking a lot of favors out of people yeah. because they don't quite see the vision that you do. And you're just like, I know you don't understand this, but do you think you could make this part for me? <laughs> and they're like, what, you right, know? Right. And so, um, all of that being said, um, I always tried to watch the budget. Mm -hmm. uh, like I made a commitment that I wasn't going to tap into the family budget. And sure. so I would, you know, pack some money away out of my own little mad money and say, okay, I got a couple hundred bucks. I'm going to go get this made or do, go do this. Yep. Um, so it was, it was a very long process. Um, this actually started uh, probably about 2000. Uh, let's see, probably about 2019, 18 or 19. Um, the patent process itself took about two and a half years. Wow. Yeah, that was a long, long process. And the University of Cincinnati is really how I got that done. Their, yeah. their law school, um, occasionally they would advertise for needing new projects for their law interns, mm, okay. their law school interns, because that patent is a uh, quote it to me would be about a $20,000 patent. Mm -hmm. I didn't have $20,000 to throw yeah. at this. And so I contacted them and I got rejected the first time. A couple years later, I, I threw my name back in the hat and I got accepted mm -hmm. because I was one of the very few mechanical utility okay. type patents. Uh, most of them were software types. Gotcha. And yeah. so they called me back and, and so they assigned me to a student, but everything was really awesome there. And so kudos to UC uh, Law School and, and the guys that helped me with that. Um, so that was a long process. And then it was a matter, you, you know, of making a lot of phone calls, trying yeah. to, I can weld and stuff like that, but it is, it's yeah. not pretty. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And so after the initial type prototypes, I needed guys who had craftsmanship skills yeah. and I just knew that. And so trying to get guys to give me a little bit of their time, um, that was hard, you know, yeah. because they're busy. Yep. And, and so you're asking for a lot of favors. Yep. Um, so, yeah, I mean, that was kind of that process. Yep. And really, I, um, Greg Hawk, who is from WireTech, he is just a genius in his engineering mind. 
um, Greg and I were working together and he was looking at things. He's like, oh, I can do that. Like, that's mm. not a big deal. I, I do that sort of stuff. And so he's, he's a local guy. Yeah, yeah. I mean, here he is in my backyard. Right, right. And um, we start going to work on this and he has really helped tweak and fine tune so many different things that had brought it to the level of function that it is right yeah. now. And so all of that was process. Yeah, I love it. Yeah, you know, I, I mean, I think I think the question has to be asked, and I, and I know you're still working through the process of now marketing this and, and going through, yeah. you know, fine tuning. We're just at the beginning. Right, right. So <laughs> the, the, the question I think we gotta ask, is it all worth it? Um, so here's the, the quick answer. 100% yes, and here's why it's worth it. Whether we sell one or none, okay? It's worth it because now I know I'm not going to my grave going, mm. I wonder if. Yep. 100%. And I think as a man, as a mm. person, unlived dreams are lived regrets. Wow, yeah. Okay, and- That's good, you should like, write a book I should write that, should You I? should write yeah. that, yeah. And so the idea here, even like the finisher, I mean, the finisher, I was totally excited about it. And, you know, I, I took a few hits with that. And, you know, whether somebody else thought it was ridiculous or not, I, that's not my problem. Yeah. Okay. The idea here is us living out the dream and being responsible for the dream, good, bad, or whatever. Yep. All right. And so if it doesn't, if the kettle bar doesn't sell one, which by the way, we've already sold a couple. Let's so, go. Boom. All right. Um, I will at least say, well, you know, I went out and I did it. Yeah. And I think really part of the, that's a gift to my own psyche, but that's also a gift to my kids. Yeah. My kids have seen my sweat on it. Yeah. Like one of the deals in my house is if you keep talking and not doing, we're going to tune you out. Mm. You better shut up and do. Yeah. And otherwise just go do something else yeah. and move on. And that's just, I was raised that way. And I give yeah. all the glory to my dad and that, you know, because yep. he, he, that was his mantra, man, shut up and do, yeah. shut up and do. And I think that's part of, of that. So is it worth it financially right now? No. <laughs> okay. Right. Financially, no, uh, for my life. Yes. Yeah. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see on the next. Chapter. Isn't, isn't that such, I mean, we talk all the time, guy, I feel like more so men, and this is a very general statement, but I feel like a lot of men get in this, the, the rut of same shit, different day. Right. Yeah, yeah. And man, to have something that you've chased after a passion that you've gone after to be able to, to kind of put your foot down and you're not going to keep saying that you're actually going to go do something. Um, I think is a great encouragement for, for all of us out there that, that man, let, let's, let's have the dreams and then let's go and act on those dreams. Because yeah. if not, like you said, you go to the grave with all these regrets yeah and, and just know that you're gonna you're gonna get messy it's gonna you're gonna get failure after failure mm. um, I think part of the hard thing is knowing like when do I say tap out like and I can't answer that for you because there are many days where I was like uh, I just need to tap out yeah because of either aggravation or risk or cost um, but the only thing I'll go back to is for some reason, it would not leave my mind. Mm. It just wouldn't leave my mind. I mean, I would wake up at three in the morning with a new either exercise yeah. or a new thing. And, you know, Linda would say, how'd you sleep? And I'd be like, like <laughs> crap. I was up at three o'clock and drawing a new design or whatever. Mm. And she'd be like, kettle bar on the brain, kettle bar yeah. on the brain. Um, so, you know, I, you listen to the people around you, um, but you also have to listen. I, I think the Holy Spirit works yeah. within us. And when something's laid on your heart, it just doesn't go away. You know, for years it was laid on Linda's heart, adoption. Mm, yeah. And it was not laid on mine. Right. Just like the kettle bar was not laid on her heart, but yeah. it was laid on mine. Yeah. And adoption was laid on her heart and she'd bring it up. And I would try to kind of listen, but then try to go, oh, I hope this train passes us by. Mm. Out of selfishness, out of disconnect, like it wasn't of me. Um, and then all of a sudden God grabbed me. 
and he brought me into that story. Yeah. And I've shared that story before as to how that happened. But the idea, all of a sudden, he he put it on my heart, mm. which I wasn't even asking for it. Yeah. And so, you know, um, you got to listen to the people in your world, but you also got to listen. Uh, the Holy Spirit speaks directly to you, yeah. and it's sometimes it's right in front of your face. Yeah. You know, what, one thing you just said, Merle, I've been, uh, I watched a documentary on Netflix. It's called Full Swing. It's the golf, the, the PGA Tour yeah. golf documentary. And in that, they were talking just because on the PGA Tour, it's so hard to win. And mm-hmm. one, of the, one of the golfers on that made a comment, and, and it's kind of a quote that uh, I really liked. As soon as you said it, it kind of clicked with me that, that winners – are just losers who never quit. Yeah. <laughs> and I love that because I think just what you're talking about, there's going to be failures. There's going to be times where you lost and something didn't work out, but just digging your, you know, digging your feet in deeper and saying, no, this is a passion. This is a goal of mine. I'm going to go, I'm going to go in and try and achieve it. So yeah. I love it. I, I mean, I, I think as we kind of close this out, um, you know, similar to what we do with all of our guests, I, I want to give you the opportunity to, to kind of market, you know, kettle bar and, and let, let all of our strong guys out yeah. there know where we can find it. Well, join us in the dream, join us in the adventure, right? And so uh, if you think that this is interesting or uh, I don't care if you want to just pick my brain on the process or if you're interested in the product itself, right? Reach out to uh, me. Uh, We started our website. uh, It's called kettlebarfitness.com. And you can, I mean, that's already up and live and working. Uh, We continue to tweak that and and put new stuff on it. Um, You can see what we're doing. We're going to record at least one workout a week. So we'll have a new workout so Mm -hmm. that people, um, those who are- Are the models going to look as good as me? uh, Yeah, well, probably not quite to your level, but you know. (laughs) Man, that was pathetic, wasn't it? also, you know, if you just want to get a hold of me, I'm as Hutch at rocksolidfamilies.org. Uh, for any coaching, the marriage and family, personal, yeah. uh, you can get us at rocksolidfamilies.org or you can call our office at 812-576-7625. Before we leave, what's your dream? Uh, I'm on, you are on the spot. Man, he threw that you out there. You are on the spot. What's one of your? What's one of those things that keeps fermenting inside of your head? Uh, you know, it's funny. I'm uh, uh, jumping into the to the woodworking thing and kind of you know jumping all in. And I, a dream of mine is to have a an actual storefront you know, like uh, of actually selling products that I'm making. Um, so it's you know I, I don't know. I haven't really done a whole lot of sit down and you know planning that stuff out. So, yeah. But I, that, that that would be really really cool to have. A storefronts, um, have all my tools in the back and have, you know, products for sale up in the front. I think that would be, hmm. that's, that's my retirement gig. There you go. I can see you like, uh, down on the beach somewhere. And oh yeah. Up a little, <laughs> little hut. Somewhere. That would make Jenny really little happy. Hut. <laughs> all right. All right. So thanks again for listening to strong dads. And we want to thank our sponsors. We want to thank quality out of Martin Casey's outdoor solutions for all of their support. Yep. So close us out, man. I love it. Yeah, man. Check out the uh, kettle bar. Really do appreciate uh, you talking about it. Uh, thanks for kicking my butt in the workout from our last Anytime. That was, that was <laughs> my privilege. <laughs> yep. I love it. Hope you guys are having a good week. Go out there and be some strong dads. Oh, that's the best clap of all time. Yeah, the echo. It was, it was the echo. Your clap wasn't that good. <laughs> Casey's is a premier garden center and gift shop located in Lawrenceburg, Indiana. Casey's offers a wide selection of plants, landscaping materials, home and garden decor, and gifts for every occasion. Casey's is committed to providing exceptional service, a unique shopping experience, and value to every customer. Stop in and see what makes Casey's so unique. Located at 21481 State Line Road, Lawrenceburg, Indiana, or call 812-537-3800. Let Casey's help you add beauty to your home.